Hi everyone. This is such a fun video for me to film because I am almost at 5,000 subscribers. So thank you for being here with me. And today we're going full circle to the origins of this channel where one of my first videos was about whether or not medical grade skincare is worth it. And today we're gonna dive deeper into that topic because I've collected various comments and questions so I can really help you understand what the term means, what is behind expensive skincare, and also where I stand on it so that you know my point of view. So to help me reach that 5,000 goal, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And let's talk about the scam of medical grade skincare. So first and foremost, a question I get all the time is, is that term legitimate? And the answer is no, it is just a term. Some people use the term professional skincare. Some people use the term luxury skincare. The truth is they're just words. And as you know, uh, in today's day and age, a lot of people say all kinds of things that don't necessarily have to have any kind of substance behind it. So it is a marketing term and it's targeting people who are willing to spend the money and who want really incredible results for their skin and are really looking for high quality products. This is much in line with the marketing term of green beauty, which is also nothing more than a marketing term to target a population of people who are interested in doing good things for the planet and putting healthy beneficial ingredients on their skin without any uh, toxic uh, chemicals or ingredients that may be harmful to humans. So that's another group that's targeted with the green beauty uh, labeling. Now, does that mean that all companies that claim to be green beauty are just looking to get your dollars and only interested in profit? Absolutely not. I believe there are good people in this world and there are good companies owned by good people in this world. And you may have to search and shuffle through, but you will find very ethical companies that stand true to the meaning of what green beauty is supposed to stand for. And much in the same line, you will find companies that stand true to wanting to develop the best possible, most effective skincare out there. Now that we have that established, let's talk about the most common criticism or comparison of medical grade skincare versus drugstore, and that is the ingredients are the same. And I think people who focus on reading ingredients are only seeing part of the picture. If you compare ingredients, you will not paint yourself a full picture. Here is why. We can t there are so many examples. I really want to illustrate this point really well. Let's say you want to make some crepes or pancakes and the recipe calls for eggs, milk, water, and flour and so you mix together some hard-boiled eggs with some cheese and some old bread from yesterday you have put together flour egg and milk so the ingredients are the same but are you really going to be able to create a pancake or a crepe out of cheese which is milk out of an egg which is hard-boiled and out of bread, which is essentially baked flour. So no, the answer is no. So ingredients are not everything. Another common example I use is grapes, raisins, and wine. They're all the same ingredient. And the point I'm trying to make here is that formulation is so important and people overlook formulation. And I think one of the reasons is that we do not have access to that type of information. Very often it's proprietary information. And so the only thing people have to go on is the ingredients listed on the, on the box or on the bottle. So for example, if we talk about Alpha Rep from Skin Better Science, this is a product that has a unique retinoid. It's not retinaldehyde, it's not retinol, it's not tretinoin, 
And so it's hard to um, compare it to anything else. Now, the proprietary formulation, I can't tell you what it is because it's the company's secret, but it basically works as effectively as tretinoin would. Um, and I can say that because I know a little bit more information of what, you know, what goes on in the proprietary uh, business of formulating this product. But someone picking up Alpharet over the counter and reading the label, they're going to say, ethyl lactyl retinoate, what is that? What does it convert to? I don't know. And fair enough, they don't know. But if you do know, then you can speak for the product. So I think lack of information, because companies don't disclose this information, is the formulation. And of course, what's important in making skincare effective, making sure it reaches its destination where it's supposed to do its job, making sure it's stable, and making sure it plays well with other ingredients. Sometimes two ingredients are put in the same product that naturally would not play well together, but they're formulated in such a way that they can coexist together and function together and do their separate individual jobs while in the same product. And that's all thanks to formulation. Also driving larger molecules into the skin is all based on the driver or the vehicle and the method of getting that ingredient from point A to point B. So formulation is huge. I can't stress enough how important it is. Yet, you know, another example, if you like cars, you can take a Toyota Corolla, you can take a Lamborghini. They both have an engine. They both have four wheels. They both have a steering wheel box type shape, they will get you from A to B. Is it the same thing? No. What are you paying for? The You're paying for the fact that the Lamborghini or the Ferrari has horsepower and agility and other bells and whistles that the Toyota Corolla just doesn't have. So those are, I think, really the best analogies I can think of to sort of give you that idea of the difference between the quality of different types of products and the importance of formulation. The larger companies like L'Oreal or Johnson & Johnson or Gillette actually do more research uh, than the smaller companies because they have more money. And that is in a sense very true. Um, their research though, because they're these massive companies you know, a lot of the research is safety based and a lot of the research is animal based. So things like taking different eye cream formulations and putting them on the eyes of, of rabbits and watching these poor rabbits get these infections or irritations in their eyes and, you know, documenting how irritating is this to, to the eye or, you know, shaving their, their fur off and, and harming their skin and applying topicals. I mean, it's just horrible. So that's a huge part of research um, that skincare, the skincare industry uh, spends money on. So again, remember, cosmeceuticals, so skincare, is not regulated. So you can call it what you like, professional, medical grade, green, whatever you want. You can put in it what you like and no one will verify or check you. So down below, I'm actually going to attach a video that I highly recommend for you um, that a beauty uh, skincare uh, blogger posted where she bought a whole bunch of vitamin C ascorbic acid serums and took the litmus paper to the test and measured the pH of all these different serums and showed that a lot of them were garbage. Now, they were from expensive shelves and less expensive shelves, so it's not always the price that means a product is better. I highly recommend this video, again, to give you a better idea of really having to do your own research to make sure a product is good or finding a company that you can see is has integrity i guess i'll put it that way has integrity um because everybody just wants your money and that is true everybody wants your money and so they'll try to sell you on emotion they'll try to sell you on glamour and they'll try to sell you on frivolous packaging 
all things that are supposed to elicit an emotional response to encourage you to purchase a product. So that all exists. It absolutely exists. And the, the, the trick is to kind of decipher through and find companies that you can align with, which is what I have done, but we will get to me at the end of this video. So in terms of, you know, YouTube uh, opinions and different YouTubers, um, you kind of find the people you align with. There are a lot of dermatologists that promote drugstore um, skincare. The most popular one I can think of is Dr. Dre. There's also Dr. Shireen Idris. She kind of goes a little bit both ways. She promotes uh, some uh, medical grade and some drugstore. Then there's Sam Ellis, who also kind of goes both ways and Dr. Daniel Sugai, just to name a few. Um, he does a heavy um, focus on drugstore, but then he also really enjoys Skin Better Science. But to contrast that, there are dermatologists that swear by medical grade skincare exclusively. And some examples include Dr. Stephanie Kappel, Dr. Shinobe Aguilera, and Dr. Sabrina Fabi. Stephanie Kappel just uh, created her own skincare line, but prior to that, they all promoted medical grade skincare without having some personal investment where they were pushing their own products. So you can find whatever you're looking for on YouTube and it depends on what your goals are, what your budget is, what your interests are and who you trust. So what do we make of all this? Choosing wisely. Well, that's difficult when you're not privy to a lot of the information that you might want to know. So you can find people who will spend the money to go through the products and test them to give you information, you know, for your shopping wisdom and find people you trust. And speaking of people you trust, now I'll turn the focus on to me. So many of you who followed me for a while, you already know where I stand and what I think, but um, I'd like to actually make it clear for those who may not know. So first and foremost, I will say that when I was graduating medical school, I did take the Hippocratic Oath. I recently found out that not all medical schools actually go through that ceremony. So that was a surprise to me. But I did um, take the oath and I've lived by it and I believe in it. And it's almost grown into like the core of my soul at this point. I take it very seriously. And if you've ever heard do no harm, that's basically the, the gist of the Hippocratic Oath. One of my values is that I do not promote products that are tested on animals. If you ever see me promote a product that's tested on animals, it's because I don't know about it. So we're all fallible, things can happen, but I do not uh, promote products that are tested on animals because at this in this day and age, with all the information we have, with all the research we have, with all the volunteers we have, human volunteers, I see no reason and I also, have a little bit of knowledge of how awful it is and I will not promote. Uh, and that's why I don't really look into a lot of drugstore products because a lot of drugs, like La Roche-Posay is a pretty good brand, but it's tested on animals. So that's one thing I will not do. The second thing is I, in this umbrella jargon garbage term of medical grade skincare, which only means you can buy it at a doctor's office or a med spa. I went through and sifted through and researched which companies I feel align with the genuine message, the genuine essence of medical grade skincare. In other words, extremely effective, well-researched, extremely beneficial, will really change your skin. And that's why I only have three companies that I work with. Um, for skincare, it's four. Color Science would be the fourth. It's because they really stand behind what they do and they are truly excellent, in my opinion. Let's take a last and for a quick example because I think it highlights it really nicely. So one of the founders and chief medical officer for Elastin is Dr. Alan Widgero. This is a plastic surgeon who has 20 years of experience in private practice with wound healing. Wound healing and wound care is one of his, I would say his career's 
primary passions. He has 130 publications. He's written two books. He's joined University of California at Irvine where he is professor and he is the director of the Center for Tissue Engineering at UC Irvine. This is someone who probably understands tissue healing, collagen production, elastin production, fibroblast stimulation better than 99% of dermatologists or people in the world. Like this is his focus. So he is highly educated in this region. He is internationally renowned. So someone with such a wealth of knowledge in tissue healing who also has a passion for research and a passion for skincare and becomes part of a brand focused on tissue healing and collagen production is probably pretty trustworthy. And then you can dig deeper and look at Elastin's research and they do tissue biopsies to see cell behavior at a microscopic level. So there may not be many of these types of companies, which is why I only have a select few. Does that mean that all others uh, don't meet the same standard? No, I mean, I'm just one person, I can't spend the time to investigate every single medical brand to determine you know if if they're if they're a good brand or not i i do my best i'm happy with the products that i that i work with i feel that they give me everything that i need and occasionally i'll find a new one so right now i'm really looking into epicutus i've been looking into epicutus for over a month and I'm talking with Epicutus, I'm learning about it, I'm reading the research, and I'll decide is it something that I want to bring on board or not. It's not a quick decision. That's how I work and that's how I make decisions. And on my channel, when I talk about Skin Better Science or Elastin or Zeo or even Color Science and I say medical grade, I mean that literally. I mean it in the sense that it is a very high quality product. Um, that doesn't mean it's prescription based, but for example, some Zeo products, I feel they need a consultation before someone puts them on their face because they're extremely strong and effective. And people can walk away saying, I had a reaction, I'm allergic to it, only because they didn't know how to properly use the products because they are so strong. And as I've said before, the retinols from Zeo are the strongest retinols I've ever experienced. And they're very similar to prescription strength tretinoin. So if ever I'm looking for a very strong retinol that is not tretinoin, I will reach for Zeo. You will not find a drugstore product that comes close to Zeo retinols or elastin skin nectar or elastin peptides or Elastin Illuminate Brightening Serum. If you just look at ingredients, maybe, but before and afters and efficacy efficiency, you, you won't find that at the drugstore. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. I love you all. Thank you for being here. And here's to the upcoming 5,000. Cheers.